I got back to New Zealand from Pennsylvania at the tail end of the winter and I was eager to get up to the cabin and see how it had fared while I was away and this is the way things were looking when I returned, cold but beautiful. Sometimes just getting to the cabin itself can be an adventure. You don't always know quite what you're going to strike on the way. Driving my rear wheel drive car on the tarmac is fine, but after a certain point, part of the journey now, after so much rain in the last year or so, has become four wheel drive only to get that last part of the way to the cabin. I don't own a four wheel drive myself, I wish I did. If I had the money I would buy myself a nice sized four wheel drive truck but at least I have an arrangement with a friend whereby I can borrow and use his four wheel drive to get up that last bit of the journey to the cabin and it's always close by for either of us to use for these trips up into the hills and if for some reason it's not there well I can always walk the last part of the journey anyway. mud was pretty deep on this part of the trail but I was excited knowing I was soon going to see the cabin again after having not been up there for over two months. Light snow had settled on the hills adjacent to the cabin and soon I saw a couple of familiar friendly faces. This particular day was pretty cold just above freezing but these two seem to be still able to eat um, and not be too perturbed about it. Where I live in New Zealand at this altitude, it's not like Alaska or Canada or somewhere where a lot of the cabin videos are. When it snows here, it generally doesn't stick around for too long. But of course on the higher peaks in the mountains around here, the snow is generally there pretty much all of the winter. With sleet, snow and freezing rain falling, it was definitely a pretty bleak day and to be honest it can be a pretty windswept and inhospitable place up at the cabin with the hills and the wind whipping around down through them. And even if the snow doesn't settle too much or too deep, that wind whipping through can feel very cold on days like this. But then when the sun comes out, it can be a beautiful place to be, as you can see in these pictures, with the mountains covered in snow in the background and the pine forest near the cabin, it's awesome. I don't actually live at the cabin, but in some ways I think that makes it even more special because you can really look forward to going up there and getting away from your normal surroundings. And I think it's important for all of us to have somewhere that we can go where we can press into God maybe, get a little bit of alone time, do something different. With all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world these days, having somewhere to go where you can escape from it all and just get mental and spiritual health, peace of mind and refocus maybe it's important and that's one of the reasons why having this cabin to go to is important for me, for my own mental health and spiritual well-being. And on a frosty cold morning with a fire going and beautiful scenery, well it's hard to beat really. Now I know wherever we are we should be able to be in fellowship and communion with the Lord, but in nature and simplicity it somehow feels a little easier. But you do get days where the wind's howling and it's inhospitable or it's raining and it feels bleak. Well that's just kind of like life really. We all have days where the world feels cold and we feel battered about. And we need to have our spiritual roots anchored well and firmly so that we don't get blown off course or toppled over by the winds of life. 
I think there are many of us that feel worn out or burnt out over the events that have happened in the world in the last few years and maybe in our own personal lives pressures seem to have ramped up but no matter what difficulties we face the sun will come out again on our lives just as it does in the natural world. Another thing that would do well for people to think about is what do they do in the future, which may be the near future or it may be a little further down the track, but if society breaks down, where would you go? What would you do? Do you have an escape plan? Do you have somewhere you can go to get away? Particularly if you're in a big city in a crowded area, have you got a contingency plan of somewhere that is maybe a little safer? Uh, Nowhere in this world will be completely safe and we can't escape, I believe, what's coming upon the world. But all the same, I think it's pertinent that people pray about it and think, well, have you got somewhere that God may have safe for you to go in the event of total societal collapse or something similar to what happened in the last two or three years, only worse So anyway, enough of those random thoughts. Back to the cabin and this is my small little kitchen. As you can see I have a little gas cooker and below it here we have a fridge and next to it is my solar generator which I can run things from either 240 volt mains power or 12 volt. The fridge is only a small chest fridge but it does the job quite nicely for what I want up here. And so it's time to cook some dinner. And though you see there are plenty of wild deer out near the cabin, these venison sausages actually came from the supermarket. I could have cooked the dinner on the little wood stove in the cabin and sometimes I do but anyway later on it is a good place to boil a kettle and make a cup of coffee and sit down and take it easy. Actually what I'm making here is one of my favourite evening drinks. It's not just straight coffee, it's a mixture of coffee and chicory and I'm going to do it in a French press or plunger as we call them in New Zealand.
Well, it hasn't taken long to get nice and warm in here with that fire going. So, taking off one layer, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice with the fire going on a winter's evening and um, sitting in here and having a, a nice drink and just being able to chill out and relax. And I like just the simplicity, even having candles on for a change, you know. It's different and it's nice, it's peaceful, it's relaxing, it's different from your everyday life, you know. Where electricity is everything, and even though I have some electricity here through solar power, it's also great just to do things like run candles and fires and, you know, simple the way it was done in the past and I love it. And get yourself a chicory and coffee and it's a great way to finish the day. I mentioned earlier about having our roots on solid foundation and down deep. Well, I think for me, time spent reading the Word of God and the Bible is probably the one thing that stops me from getting too far off course in my life. Without that, who knows where I'd be today. <laughs>